there, hi. I'm Maggie, and I'm a Sagittarius. I like rollerblading, snow cones, and female vice presidents. I don't like bacon bits, toupees made out of nylon, and tie-dye. On March 17th, I decided to write a gay soap opera, and I'm going to tell you my story. So sit back, grab a cocktail if you want, and you're old enough, and listen. Turn oh, I thought I left my phone at home. Oh. Okay, go on, Jamie. Go, go play nice with the other guests. I have a story to cover. Okay, bye, sweetie. Chase, girlfriend, stay out of trouble. You know what five complaints at your job turns into. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know about that, Jamie? I heard all about it at happy hour. Ta-ta. I hate you both. Down the street on Main Street, our story moves to the lobby of Bagsley and Buck accounting firm. Laurie Buck, dressed in a pristine pantsuit, paces the lobby with angst. A few seconds later, Mark walks in carrying a coffee. Mark! So nice of you to come in today, on your day off and all. You asked me to, Laurie. I'm sorry it took so long to answer. I was still in a deep sleep when you called the fourth time. Well, I wouldn't have called so many times if it wasn't urgent, sweetie. And it took you, what, five hours to arrive? Oh, I'm not complaining. I didn't even know it's been that long since I called. I've been so busy. <laughs> Pacing the lobby? Is that coffee for moi? This one's mine. I, I didn't think to grab you your regular one grande vanilla latte, one and a half pump vanilla only, extra foam, sub with blonde espresso shot, extra hot in a venti cup. On my day off and all. I see. What's so urgent anyway, Lori? We have a new client. My brother. Richie? You know him? He doesn't know I exist. I, I mean, I I've been to his bar, the Torn Curtain. Of course you've been there. You're gay. Well, I assume you're gay and would go there. I've seen the pictures on your desk in your office. You've been in my office? Prying? What? No. Mark, I don't pry. I had to turn off your monitor one night to conserve energy. And there was that picture of you between the two Chip and Dale dancers. Compared to them, you looked quite, well, gay. Can we talk about Richie? Sure. Well, he will be Mr. Bach to you, Mark. I need you to manage his books and file taxes for him this year. You want me to... My brother has never shared his financial matters with me. He doesn't know I exist. Call it pride. The man does nothing wrong. Ever. No matter how often I go to his bar. From what I gather, he's in a financial crisis, Mark. He's a good man. Oh, I know. I, I mean, I, I bet he is a good man. I, I've heard he's real good. Like, good in a man sort of way. Well, that's what you just said. He's a good man. I, I haven't heard that from anyone else. I barely even know him. I mean, I don't know him at all. What's his name again? Mark. Sorry. Well, right before shelter in place, uh, before Zoom and uh, virtual calls, I was prepared to uh, produce a play. And then when shelter in place happened and I saw other theater companies that were brainstorming ways to bring virtual theater to homes, I decided to transition Victoria Place into a virtual show. Well, for me, when I see a show on Zoom, I see a person at home, or I know that person is home and not on stage. So for me, it's difficult to engage and to, to really delve into a theatrical experience knowing that person is, you know, might be in their kitchen or might be in their living room. So I have, I have seen a couple of shows recently 
uh, where theater companies use virtual backgrounds to show setting, to show uh, scenery. And I thought that was pretty clever, pretty creative uh, during this time. But I also saw, for me, it was a little difficult um, to control the background, the, uh, the virtual background. My initial idea was to produce an animated five episode series. Each episode would last up to 20 minutes long. Because it was taking some time to find the right illustrator, as well as to produce it, I decided to produce a virtual reading of the series. So what we're doing right now is we are airing our episodes live through Zoom. So we aired the first episode in December. There are six episodes to our first season. And based on public commentary and the increase in our audience, as well as the increase in the need for virtual entertainment, my team and I decided to produce monthly virtual episodes starting in January to give viewers something to look forward to because they're hooked. They're hooked. In the meantime of that, we will continue to produce our animated series. And on top of that, we are going to produce our very own newly coined term, queer motion comic which is going to be an animated short based on a section of the first episode. And we do intend to submit it to LGBTQ plus festivals worldwide. You know, Matt. Mark. Sorry, Mark. I'm um, no offense, but I just don't think I can do this. I'm getting a weird vibe vibe from me no no it's not you you're fine i just think that can we reschedule of course mr bach should we set something up now i'll just call you sorry have a good day the short will feature the style the content the story the humor, the characters that are represented in the animated series. Victoria Place is the overall show, is the overall production. And we're taking three different approaches to bringing this story and these characters to life. We have the animated series, we have the live shows, the live play readings that are giving audience the content, the characters, the storyline in a radio play format. And then we have the animated short that will also showcase Victoria Place while taking one of the plot lines and turning it into a short story. I think my I think my favorite scene was the very last scene. It was where Baby Doll had removed himself from a lot of conflict. He's new to town. He doesn't know the players. He doesn't know his environment. He doesn't know like what's available, and he has to basically cool down and think about how to problem solve. And that would also mean like finding what resources are available to you at that moment. And I think that's Baby Doll's ultimate like strength is to be able to use the resources available to get what you want and get what you need. 
and Jamie arriving to him to baby doll while baby doll is in his his mind trying to figure this out and that disconnect alone created such a beautiful relationship mixed with mistrust and question and need and mutual benefit i think that created a really strong foundation not only for those two characters but also what's to come and the last line being welcome to victoria i just get chills just now welcome to victoria place just set the ball rolling Discovering your passion, our calling is much more than a career title or making a certain amount of money. It's about discovering your authentic self, peeling back the layers of who you think you should be, and going deep inside and finding your unique purpose. To find what excites you and what sets you apart from any other person. At the young age, I reached a point of my life where I knew I had to shift. I had to change my standards and my life would change drastically. I grew up living with the identity that was given to me, an identity that was not chosen. I wrestled with the identity of who I expected to be. I was lonely. I was confused. I spent a lot of time alone trying to process my feelings. One day at the age of seven, I decided we live who we believe we are. And as Martha Graham says, you are unique. And if you're not fulfilled, then something has been lost. It took some time for me to find myself because of odd reasons. I was willing to admit wrong and who I was, but I didn't know why. I didn't know what the often blame was heading towards me. And I disapproved of this. As a child, we don't know what's right and what's wrong. We make our family and our friends happy. We want to make them approve of us, to love us, even at the cost of ourselves. Growth is a result of bad habits. I was surrounded by bad habits at the young age, and I had no choice but to grow up quickly. Sometimes I wish I could go back. What I know now and accept who I was sooner. Maybe I would have smiled more. Maybe I would have found myself earlier. To as I look back on my career as a national aerobic champion, thanking my mother for letting me do the blessings that has been given to me. My family, I absolutely love and miss you dearly. Becoming an Alvin Ailey dancer in New York, amazing blessing moments, and becoming a gymnast in Long Branch High School. My sister Diane, I miss you dearly. My brother Alan, I miss you dearly. Sean and my mother Mary and my Aunt Iretta, I'm at loss for words. And then there's me, the person that they said would never become a dancer would never become a gymnast because we're not supposed to do these things. It's unheard of. Men don't do that. Girls do those things. Well, here I am, shining bright like a diamond and as proud as I can be 
as an Afro-American male. Love you all. Stay positive. Stay healthy. Stay strong. It's up to you. Absolutely no one else. Shine bright like a diamond. And then, I found my soulmate. We are a day apart. I am March 8th, and he is March 9th. And we are yin and yang. Absolutely amazing. I love this man with all of my heart. And he always tells me that I am resilient. Shine bright like a diamond. Be who you are. Stick to your career. Stick to whatever is given to you. Be your own boss. You don't need anyone to tell you what to do. Coming from where I've come from, I am extremely, extremely grateful and happy and blessed to be resilient. Hank Dean, married name Hank Glasser. Model, dancer, personal trainer, gymnastics coach, husband, and once again, I love you all. I'm Gabrielle of 2020, and this is Gabrielle of the 1970s. I remember at the time you were talking about coming out publicly gay or lesbian or dyke. <laughs> so you'd been talking about coming out as a way of being more yourself and how it was a political act and how important it was to do that and what you didn't know because you were so young and there was no real research because people hadn't really come out on national television that much that coming from an immigrant family you know it's very different being a first generation immigrant they really want you to become a doctor or a lawyer or something that's important in the dominant culture that coming out as a lesbian is devastating to the family and the rejection that comes with that was so, so awful for you. You know, rejection from the family is unusual for minorities except for the LGBTQ plus community and I learned something new recently that there's a word for it now it's called losing permanency and what does that mean remember how you felt when your family wanted you to change your last name so that they would not be associated with you. Well, what losing permanency means is it's a word for that feeling you had that the bottom of your whole life just fell away and that you had nowhere to be. And you know how you never felt like you fit in as a female either in the regular community, because remember when mum, when you were a teenager, wanted you to wear makeup and you said no. And she said, what are you, a tomboy? And you went, no. <laughs> then what are you? And you could never figure it out. But your gender expression has always been uh, what we now call gender queer. There's real words for how you were back then and the way you handled it was so amazing. I'm amazed myself that a young person like that ended up saying 
I don't belong anywhere, but I'm determined to be comfortable everywhere. And you know that I still use that phrase today. And not only are the LGBTQs and pluses our family, but so are all the minorities in the world. what we have had to learn in the LGBTQ plus community, that we are each other's siblings and you are our siblings. Hi everyone, my name is Nico and I'm excited to announce we have started Propel at the Billy DeFrank Center. Um, it is for queer and trans writers um, in their 20s. So if you enjoy poetry, um, you know, any type of creative writing, um, you know, scripts, uh, just journaling in general, we're all just going to get together uh, for an hour on Tuesdays, every Tuesday um, at 6 p.m. So feel free to shoot me an email at nico at defrank.org. That's N-I-K-O at defrank.org. Thank you so much. And hopefully I will hear from you guys soon. Bye. We love to get mail from you. Email us at comments at outlookvideo.org. To contact us by phone, call 408-293-3040, extension 205. Visit our website at outlookvideo.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Outlook Video. And connect with us at facebook.com slash Outlook Video. The Billy DeFrank LGBTQ Community Center is like this huge building that people think, well, what happens there? Well, almost every group that is going to be at uh, the Earthquakes Pride Night actually meets at the Billy DeFrank Center or we collaborate with them in some way. Everyone wants to be there. It's a place where people see each other, meet, discuss things. A really good example is um, we used to have a group called High Tech Gays because way back when uh, the high-tech industry was able to fire people if they found out that you were LGBTQ. And so high-tech gays formed at the Billy DeFrank Center to discuss how can we change the, um, the policies at high-tech companies. And so they did it one company at a time with the support of each other. I was here uh, three years ago, the first time, and I'm going, oh, isn't this great that the Earthquakes wants to do a Pride Night? I get it, you know, um, that you want all of us to enjoy soccer and tell us that we are welcome here as us. 
I came out in 1966 and you know it was really horrendous so for me everything is magical <laughs> it's like ooh, you have a giant rainbow <laughs> you know what I mean and soccer it is perceived as you know only certain people like soccer and only certain people like sport when in actual fact it's for everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Hey, somebody's calling me. Now, are you going to get the boots or what? I'm getting the, that's what I was just doing. <laughs> and that's a wrap for this month's edition of Outlook Video. You can watch extended versions of our segments and archive past programs on Outlook Video's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Outlook Video. Be sure to click on the subscribe button and also click on the bell for notifications of our latest videos. Also friend us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Outlook Video. Outlook Video is made possible by generous donations from viewers like you and talented volunteers behind the camera whose names you'll see as we close. And if you live in the Bay Area and would like to volunteer at Outlook Video, contact us through our Facebook page. <laughs> Didn't do it to impress, did it to feel good And if you dropped your jaw, well that's just real cool So pass the bottle now, cause I'ma celebrate I didn't bake the cake, but I'ma say I ate Cause I'ma crush it, yeah baby real slow Yeah I'ma grind it, I'm gonna chase the flow Life is moving way too fast And I got a lot to do So get out my ear, get out my ear So get out my ear One shot because I do it like this. Yeah.